Right, so it's finally time to do a little unboxing, a little work on this guitar here in the metal shop. Those of my faithful viewers will remember I bought this guitar in around January of 2023, so pretty darn close to 18 months ago. Um, what happened is Jeff Beck had died and it kind of hit me kind of hard, I was a big fan of his, so I actually picked up a couple of guitars that... Uh, were special to me about him, the guitars that he had that reminded me of him. And you remember, I got the uh, the soloist here in the orange, which is very close to the guitar that he had here on the cover of the Musician Magazine back in 1985. And the other one that I really liked was his pink soloist. And this is also, this is from January of 1985, but this is one of the very first Jackson soloists made. So that in combination with Jackson putting out um, a soloist with a uh, non-recessed Floyd led me into picking this up. So I've had it all this time and believe it or not, yes, I have resisted the temptation. See some future projects over there. I have resisted the temptation to open this. Hopefully it's not damaged, <laughs> right? That would be a killer. If I find that it's got a broken headstock, I'm gonna eat it. Uh, this came from Sweetwater. Sorry, we're gonna, gonna one hand this here. I think we've got it. Right. So let's see here. It's nice how they do this. All right. I had one of these back in the day. Had a legit 85 Jackson hum single single custom soloist with the shark fins. Um, Floyd Rose, very nice, very rare, very valuable guitar, but. Um, that guitar had a, I had a repaired truss rod where the truss rod would spin and they heated it up and caught it, you know, made it grab some more, but there was a weird hump in the neck and yeah, I passed that one on. I just never played it. It didn't really play that great. It didn't really sound that great. And it's funny because Steve Vai, which is also, will tie into today, he, he did a review of a Jackson Solos, like an SL2H, like a snakeskin one. He had a bunch of guitars that he was reviewing, and he recalled about all of his Jacksons, and he still has a couple of them. But he said, no more um, neck-through guitars for me because the neck always breaks, and once it does, you're done. You're sunk. So, and, I mean, you play them the way Steve I does. <laughs> they probably do. So, yeah, we're in good shape here. The headstock is is intact. Got that really nice 80s looking headstock there. Um, a bit of dust on there. Oh, look at that color peeking through. Beautiful. Oh, and this one also, sorry, you're gonna have to look at the box there for a second. Also has the, um, the dot inlays. All right, so we're back. That shroud started ripping half and it was gonna be impossible to pull the thing off one-handed. So yeah, this came from Sweetwater Guitar Gallery. They inspected it. They do a 55 point inspection and check every check over everything and nice. Nice fretboard needs to be dressed, darken it up. You can see, you know, it's, it's unusual that you get the uh, the binding with the dots. Um, nice that they give you they protect your that's a five-way switch. That's pretty nice. And I was I thought this came with a real Duncan JB in the bridge. It does not. That's a Duncan design pickup. They're all Duncan design pickups. And that tremolo is the special. Disappointing. Disappointing at this price point. I thought I was getting the 2000. I don't remember. It's been such a long time. Um, anyway, let's put this on the workbench. 
only been 18 months, probably about time to get some work done on this thing. So what are we gonna do? Well, all the same stuff um, that I did to the orange one, we're gonna put a, a screw-in arm, we're gonna put a big brass sustain block on there, we're gonna put real goto knobs, I like to do shallow strap locks. We're gonna replace the, the input jack because it has that really crappy um, import style input jack. I must say the finish on this is is flawless. God, dig the, the non-recessed Floyd Rose. And if you see, this thing is, it sits up off the body. That's really old school. So you can pull it up and down. So what are we gonna do with it? Well, let me show you. Go back over here. It's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be on display opposite the, the orange one. I have a spot right here. Look at that strap. Dig that strap. That's an Earth 3 uh, strap with uh, Japanese symbols on. Not sure what it says, but I've had that strap since the 80s. I probably got that in 86, 87, something like that, whenever Steve Vai got his. So my plan for right now is to make this a replica of this guitar right here with a pink and black humbucker in the bridge and a white single coil in the middle and the black single coil in the neck. And if I'm looking at this, so you're looking at this with me, that sure looks like he has a chrome Floyd on his. And I'm not sure if I have one on hand. Um, Sometime, something that I really like to do is, it's a really cool look from back in the day, is you have a chrome Floyd, chrome locking clamp, the rest of your hardware is black. And Jackson did that with some of the earliest guitars because that's what they could get for Floyd's, were the chrome, that's it. So the hardware didn't match, and I, to me, that just looks great. So let's uh, start uh, breaking into this thing and getting some work done, all right? Cool. All right, so time to wrap this thing up. Uh, sorry, I did swap out the pickup. This is a Dragonfire, uh, whatever their hot ceramic humbucker is. I can't remember. I really liked the description. Really happy with Dragonfire pickups. Got the white cover on. That was a pain. I had to sand down the pickup itself. I had to sand down inside the cover using, I think, you know, this uh, Dremel tool here. Uh, let's see, I've treated the fingerboard, I have the back, what I need to do is I need to string, this is loose, this is just loose right now, I have the Floyd Heavy Duty Red Springs, this is the Alnico, Alnikov, I won't keep wanting to say Alnico 5 as a guitar player, but it's the Alnikov Trem Center, this will screw in place and it, it's pretty unique, it works very well. Um, you can still go up and down, um, but it acts like your tremolo is blocked here. A funny thing, when I was, uh, when I ran the wires, it's really tight because they go all through the same hole. Um, but I found, I'm looking at the pickups and it's like, 
like two of the pickups wires are going to one lug here on the five-way switch. I'm like, that can't be right. But I, I didn't really think much of it. I soldered the pickup, you know, the humbucker, the black and pink humbucker to the lug that it's supposed to go to. And I go and test it out. And sure enough, two pickups are on all the time in the, the number one position, all, you know, with a five-way all the way back. And I look at it, I'm like, that's not right. So that came from the factory with the the middle pickup and the bridge pickup soldered to the same position on the five-way. Weird. Um, I don't know if you can, if the camera's going to pick this up here. Let's see if I can, can I, there we go. Yeah, I can get in there. But this route in here is terrible. I mean, it is terrible. There is little bits of sawdust and wood shavings and, routing I, little fingers everywhere and they painted it pink i mean it's hidden inside here but i've been pulling little pieces have been falling off um all over the place and this is i'm not sure where this is from this has got black or some shielding paint on it so that had to have come from inside this cavity somewhere but these little pink pieces have been flying all over the dang place so, what do we have left to do here? I have some the real Goto knobs to put on there instead of these plastic inserty things that come on the guitar, which I can't stand. These stink. I don't know if I'll be able to pull them right off by hand. Yeah, I mean, I've done this before, but you can see that. That's just, I hate that. That's garbage. Anyway, yeah, when the, when the selector was all the way in this position, this pickup and this pickup were on all the time. I've got that fixed. Um, yeah, you saw everything in the time lapse. Oh, that one's gonna, that one does not want to come off. Got the jack plate. Oh, and I had, I have metal, uh, metal back plates made for this. So let's, uh, let's get this stuff going in time lapse. I need to get this thing off the bench and get a guitar that's actually paying on the bench. All right. All right, my friends. Well, we're going to close out the video here. I apologize. There's going to be no uh, playing demonstration uh, at this time. I really wanted to do, believe it or not, my favorite uh, Steve Vai song from uh, Eat Him and Smile is Tobacco Road. And I ran through it a little bit and I realized I really need to brush up. <laughs> I couldn't even remember about half the song. So anyway, there she is with Steve, his original guitar. And there we have the finished product complete with eat em and smile vinyl lp right behind it but look at that my friends that looks looks the part i did give it a run through the uh the dragon fire pickup and i'll try and insert a link and the uh, the proper description of it into the comments sounds uh, it sounds pretty good um i wouldn't say fantastic i wouldn't it's not on par with like a duncan or a demarzio but pretty close and I want to say um, it was pretty inexpensive for a set of two I think it was not even fifty dollars so um, and part of the other reason I couldn't get to the uh, ah, pretty maids up there to the playing demonstration I reused the same strings that came with the guitar so they've been you know they're they're ancient they've been sitting on the in the case in the box for 18 months um, who knows how long before that and the frets are wicked crunchy. Um, so I need to put a good set of strings on there and polish the frets before I do anything else. And um, I, if you did notice in the time lapse, hard to see, I did not use the Alnikov trim setter in the back. I ended up not needing it with the heavy duty springs. I have a, a blocked setup. It just, the springs pulled it back enough that it's hitting the wood in the trim cavity. So. I have a block setup which I actually like and prefer. Um, I usually don't play a, 
a uh, thin cloth strap like this, but I guess I'll make an exception. Um, but stay tuned. I do, I promise, I promise, I promise that I will do a playing demonstration once I have uh, changed this out for some elixirs, polished those frets, and brushed up on my Tobacco Road uh, playing skills. So as all of my friends, I truly appreciate your support. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you're new to the channel, please click subscribe. Um, really helps out. Give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed watching the process of building the, the Steve Vai uh, Jackson guitar here for uh, my display up here in the metal shop. Um, hit me up in the comments. Still reply to all my comments. I said give me a thumbs up already. And I truly, truly do appreciate your support, my friends. And lots more to come. All right? Awesome. Take care.